School, I'm Taylor Norsworthy. And I'm Haven Bennett. It's February 2014, a new year with new stories. Change takes place at WHS. Next year, a new schedule. Learn how to create your own app in our new application class. Today, find out about an unfamiliar city ordinance that most students put on the back burner. Boys Choir qualifies for state. When residents learn to appreciate electricity. We've got your weather. And don't forget sports. It's Valentine's Day. Jacket Action News starts now. get bruises and broken bones and go to school and I'll look like that because because whenever somebody hurts whenever somebody hurts me I feel sad about it. After many years of being on a four-block schedule, the Win Yellow Jacket staff votes on a new one. <laughs> when 17 years of block scheduling comes to an end, January 27th, the school board voted for change. I think the new schedule is going to be very beneficial for the students here at Win. Um, some positives about it, they, it will give students an opportunity to be with their teacher three days a week, every other day. Um, I think that that C day will be a good day to reflect what you did on the, the week before. One negative may be that there may be a lot of tests that day. Maybe we can do something about that, but I, I really like the ABC schedule. The school board voted on ABC, but they have not voted or, or talked or we, they hadn't made a decision on how it affect athletics. Hopefully, it will get us back our 90-minute athletic period. The teachers had three choices. ABC alternate, ABC schedule, or seven period classes. The ABC schedule consists of A classes on Mondays and Wednesdays, B classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and C classes on Friday. Students will report to all classes on Fridays. The main reason for the change in the schedule at the high school next year is because of the park testing that goes into place during the 14-15 school year. Every student will have to take two exams in each subject next year, one in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and in Geometry. They also have to take a literacy exam in 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, and they'll be tested twice on each of that, each of those courses. And so at, after they've completed 75% of the course, they'll take a test, and then after they complete the course, they'll take a test. So moving to the ABC spreading out over the entire year is going to make it easier on transfer students. Change can be hard, and people may take some time to adjust to reality. But with change comes growth, and win moves forward. I'm Faith Hogue with Jacket Action News. Everyone left and you left me on. Teaching students to become innovative app creators, the mobile application development class makes a splash at WHS. Essential for schools across America to implement more and more technology courses into their curriculum due to the youth's growing dependency on technology when high school is stepping up their game by adding the MAD program. B2 Gandhi talks about the MAD projects. Well, the class is mostly based off projects. And the first project we did was a poster to get introduced to the class. And right now, we're getting uh, into actually how the app gets made. So we'll do more projects on that after. Student Christian Jumper explains what MAD stands for and why he decided to take this class. MAD stands for Mobile Application Development. I took this class because I feel like it was the, the first step into going into my career in computer science. MAD instructor Chris Davis elaborates on the benefits of the MAD class and tells how to get involved. I think it's a neat opportunity for the school. We're only one in four schools that are even teaching the mobile app program in the state of Arkansas. Uh, one of two that are teaching along the side of, of Apple. 
Uh, and I think it's a, a good way to, to show that our school's on the cutting edge of, of technology and, and, the, and the types of classes and programs that we're offering. Uh, I know that probably students are wondering how to get involved. Uh, if they want to join this class, uh, what do they need to do to get in it? Uh, it's real simple. Uh, right now, you, you have to be at least a sophomore, uh, and you have to have had CBA. Once you pass CBA and, and, and you're, you meet the, the grade requirement, then you're good to go. All you have to do is sign up for it with your counselor. With Jacket Action News, I'm Montana Dennis. Am I here okay? Your hair looks great. When citizens are turning up the heat, but turning down the radio. When listening to loud music while driving can be fun, it can also be very dangerous and disturbing to those around. It is against the law to play your music at a level that is bothering to others. This law is called disturbing the peace and can result in punishment and fines up to $400 and even jail time. Student and baseball player Paxton Mills explains what age group has a problem with listening to their music too loud and why. Uh, I feel like it's teenagers because they feel like it's cool and they want to fit in with other people and the louder your music is the cooler you are. He also gives his views on why he thinks listening to loud music can be a problem. It can cause distractions uh, while driving and can cause serious injury to yourself or other people. County Police Josh Orman tells the law in Arkansas on loud music. Well, there is no state law against loud music in Arkansas. Loud music uh, is generally governed by municipalities such as Wynn. Wynn would have their own city ordinance against loud music. And I believe in Wynn, the loud music fine, if you're cited or ticketed for that, is $275. He also explains why teenagers don't pay attention to this law. They probably think, oh, well, they'll never catch me. They can't hear it outside my car. I'm cool. Look at me drive. And, uh, loud music to me has never really been a big deal. Um, it has been some uh, life lost over it, not hearing the train whistles coming, not hearing the horns behind them, not hearing the sirens coming, so it, it can be a big deal. Sophomore Katie Jumper tells how listening to loud music affects her day. I feel like it always puts me in a good mood and makes me have a better day. She also explains how loud music helps her while driving. I feel more energized and alert. Not only is listening to loud music against the law, it is also very distracting to the driver. Listening to loud music impairs the driver of hearing emergency vehicles and other vehicles trying to alert the driver of something. When people listen to loud music, they only focus on the music, making it more likely for them to have a wreck. So next time you get in the car to drive and turn your music up loud, think twice because it can save your life or even someone else's. I'm Kaylee Lawrence reporting for Jack Action News. When high school boys look to receive an all-state choir title. With only the boys finalizing an all-region choir competition, they look to compete in Jonesboro to receive an all-state title. Matthew Miller explains how it feels to be fifth chair in all-region choir. Well, we worked all semester on our all-region music, and knowing that I made fifth chair, it's really an honor because we worked every single day, all period long. He also explains how Mr. Fillion's prepared them for the All-State tryouts. Unlike other choirs, we were able to work every day for an hour and a half where they just got to work for maybe 45 minutes and maybe even 30. So it's, he had more time to give us tricks and tell us what he th thought maybe would be the tryout spot. So. He prepared us a lot better than maybe others got to be prepared. Senior Jerion Smith explains the difference between all region and all state. All region competitions is where they take each choir out of each region, grades 9th through 12th grade, and have them compete to see basically who's the best. And from there, they take the top 13 of each region and place them in the all state competitions, where then they will try out again to see who makes the All-State Choir. 
and they take the top 45 chairs and they split them into different choirs, and that's who makes on stage. Jerrion Smith elaborates on how it feels to receive an All-State title his senior year. I consider it a big honor that, you know, making All-State, being eligible to go to All-State auditions three times, and I don't take it lightly. You know, I'm just going to work hard and continue to try to do my best and aim for the highest. We wish our Jacket Mail Choir students the best of luck at All-State. I'm Montana Dennis with Jacket Action News. Caring, trust, kind, compassion, honest, <laughs> trustworthy. I'm Conley Haven here in Wynn, Arkansas, where last week's winter weather brought most of the community to a dead halt. On Tuesday, February 4th, ice on power lines and trees left over 4,000 residents without power. As you can see, it was a little scary in wind with the sounds of trees popping and lines snapping. It became difficult to even drive around without being afraid that those trees or power lines would fall on you. Not all of wind was without power. Most of the local businesses on falls still operated as normal because there aren't any trees. We really want to thank the linemen who came from all over to help restore the power. Electricity was out only a couple of days for some, but we do understand that they still worked on some this week. Now, hopefully, bad stuff is behind us. Let's go in and take a look at our upcoming five-day weather forecast. As you can see, the weather is definitely looking better this weekend. Looks like temperatures are rising just a little. Let's take a look. Today, we have a high of 51 with a low of 28. There may be some showers. On Saturday, we have a high of 49 and a low of 35. It could be partly cloudy. On Sunday, we have a high of 56 and a low of 48, also partly cloudy. On Monday, we're going to have a few showers with a high of 63 and a low of 38. And finally, on Tuesday, it's going to be a little sunny with a high of 58 and a low of 41. We're going to have a really nice weekend without snow or ice, but we better not get used to it since Phil, the groundhog, did see his shadow. That does mean that there will be a few more weeks of winter weather. I'm Conley Haven with your wind forecast, and now it's time for sports. Haywind High School, it's time for sports. I'm Sydney Moore. And I'm Logan Neal. We're here in this fabulous new gym with Coach Sanders' PE class behind us. Where they're practicing basketball. Which leads us to our boys' basketball story. Man, you know, oftentimes we, we try to be on top of everything, you know. We don't never, we never, we never try to work for anything. But when you figure out that you got to work, you got to work to get to where you want it. You got to put the work in to get the work out. And day in and day out, you try to out before team. Nothing never goes right. But when you put team before I and everything is together and you in, you win, you know all your work has paid off. It is not just because of you, but it's because of team effort and it's what you put into it to get you to where you are. Rebuilding, striving, and focusing on being the best. The Yellow Jackets boys basketball team learns the meaning of discipline. Making the playoffs last year for the first time since the 2009-2010 season, the Yellow Jackets fell short in the second round against Jacksonville. As like most Jacket teams, this has been a season of rebuilding and construction. Head coach Russell Jones explains the team's biggest challenges so far. Uh, the biggest challenge so far is the mental part of not making shots. Um, our guys get in practice, we, we shoot somewhere around 80 to 90 percent from the field every single day. 
And for us to get into a game and not be able to make shots mentally, that's, that's draining. And our, our kids, the challenge is for them to, to remember that they are great, they are good, they can make shots. And to continue to shoot those open shots, but with discipline, is the greatest challenge that we're facing right now. Junior guard Keaton Johnson gives his view of the strengths and weaknesses of the team. Our strength is our shooting. We have Charles Cobb. He, he's had some hot games here lately. And our weakness is our size and our uh, man defense. We're coming together and working hard on that and working on the principles of man defense. He also elaborates on improvements needed for the rest of the season. We can come together and play as one team and come together on one accord, then we can achieve any of our goals that we've set ourselves to achieve. Junior Dre Mason also gives his input on the team's strengths and weaknesses. Our strengths is, uh, I think it's offense, because we can score like when we want to and need to, and our, our weakness is defense because we let them score a lot, and our hip defense, we need to work on more. We wish the Jackets the best of luck for the remainder of the season. With Jacket Action News, I'm Kayla Bolden. Despite a tough season, the Wynn Lady Jackets work diligently to improve. Motivated and determined, they remain. With a tough season, the Lady Jackets remain motivated, dedicated, and determined. They strive for the best and never give up hope. The Lady Jackets work hard all season and off season to prepare themselves for conference. During this time in the season, the pressure is on. It's either make it or break it. Sophomore and point guard number 11, Carly Foltz, explains some of the biggest pressure points. Some of the biggest pressure points in our season this year is handling the ball pressure and just trying to set up an offense whenever they're just everywhere. It takes hard work, determination, and dedication to earn success. Head basketball coach Karen Sanders explains how she feels about this year's season along with how she feels about being head coach. Uh, I, I love these girls to death. This is a family atmosphere. We work hard together. Uh, we continue to work through June all the way to here. We uh, build our relationships together and I think if you pick on one of the girls you'd have about 10 others to take care of. I love basketball. I played in a high school, played it in college uh, and was blessed by God with those opportunities and I'm uh, very thankful that God gives me an opportunity to reach young female lives every day. She also describes the team's biggest challenge. Part of ours is our lack of skills and our confidence. More than anything else it's confidence. We have to believe that we have the tools needed, the people in place and we just have to put it together and believe that we are better than the team that we're playing. A wise man once said that the price of success is hard work, dedication to the job at hand, and the determination that whether we win or lose, we have applied the best of ourselves to the task at hand. I'm Faith Hoke, reporting with Jacket Action News. The Wynn Yellow Jacket baseball team steps up to the plate to take on yet another playoff run. With their 2013 season ending at just the second round, the Wynn Yellow Jacket baseball team looks to make it back to the playoffs and hopefully steal the diamond. Sophomore Ryan Spector explains the differences between Jacket baseball and Louisiana baseball. The differences I see is I'm more closer to the group of people here. I have a better chance of a winning season here. And uh, the coaches, they're more of a coach to me. I have a better relationship with everybody, and I feel like I would have more chance to win, chance to go farther in life, chance to go farther in baseball, chance to fulfill my goals and help them fulfill their goals. And it's just a great group of people to play with here. Ryan also tells how these experiences will make him a better player. I feel like I have more responsibility. If I mess up, it's on me. Everybody knows it's on me, so I want to do the best I can to make up with that mistake. And I want to do the best I can to make this team better and win and hopefully go to the playoffs and make a chance at the championship. Senior Lenny McFadden tells what he has gained by being a four-year player and what he hopes to take throughout life with this experience. 
Uh, I've gained a lot by being a four-year player. When you come in as a freshman, you learn a lot from the seniors. They really teach you how to mature. And as a senior, I've learned you know, to be mature and be a leader. Uh, I hope to take that into hopefully playing college ball next year and be a leader on that team too. Lennon also explains what teamwork means to him and which team will be their biggest competition this year. Uh, well, without teamwork, you can't win. Not one individual can do it all by herself. You can't just win with the pitcher. You have to have a catcher too. You have to have guys hit the ball. Without that, you can't. I mean, you just can't win without teamwork. I would say that BB will probably be our biggest competition in conference this year, just because our whole conference is down on starters from last year, and I believe they had the most coming back, so that'll be pretty tough. Head coach Lionel Myers explains what he expects from the new players and how they prepare for the new season. Uh, you know, with, with Landon on the mound and Nathan Harrison and even Paxton on the mound, I think, you know, we always start with pitching. Uh, you know, we, we, we go with those three guys and, you know, I got to develop some younger guys to fill the roles from last year. And, you know, we've we got to find a, basically a total different defense from last year. But, you know, I got some guys that are young and eager and are ready to play. He also tells the improvements he is seeing in his returning players. Uh, probably the main thing is, is uh, leadership. Uh, you know, I always, I always tell the guys that are returning their second year or third year players, you know, we go by that. We don't necessarily go by what class you're in. We go by how many years you played. So, you know, if they got that experience to meet the bell, I expect them to, you know, lead, lead by example. Babe Ruth once said, the way the team works as a whole determines its success. You may have the greatest bunch of individual stars, but if the team doesn't work together, the club won't be worth a dime. I'm Adarius Wallace with Jack Action News. With only three seniors to lead the team, Win Softball works to overcome small weaknesses and prepare for their upcoming season. The Lady Jackets have lost many seniors and competitive players from last year's squad. With only three seniors to lead the team, the underclassmen play a big role in helping the Lady Jackets have a successful season this spring. Senior Lindsay Pruitt tells about the characteristics of a team leader. As a senior, I can just teach them what I've been taught over the years and just encourage them to do good. She also tells us how she can fulfill those herself. A team leader needs to push people when they need to be pushed and encourage them when they're down and just be there for them. Junior Cameron Luke explains how losing so many seniors last year affected this year's team. Last year's seniors left us with big shoes to fill and the underclass did not have the leadership to look up to this year. She also talks about the strengths and weaknesses of this year's squad. The strengths are we're able to adjust really well and our hitting is a good strength for us, but a weakness would be communicating. Head coach Jared Bailey tells us what he looks for in a good athlete. Well, I look for a lot of qualities in a good athlete. One, they need to be athletic. Uh, two, they need to be coachable. Uh, three, they have to have an eagerness to learn the sport that we're participating in, which, you know, our sport is softball. Uh, they have to have a heart and a desire for it. You know, your, your great athletes, you know, possess all those qualities. They're not just athletic. They're not just, they don't just have a heart for it. You know, they have all those qualities. He also explains about the strengths and weaknesses of this year's squad. Uh, we're struggling to find our identity as an athlete, as a player. Uh, some of the younger players are, are figuring out that this is a different level of softball than what they've played in in the past. And so, you know, that may be a weakness right now, but I think it's going to make us stronger in the end. Uh, some of the strengths of this team is we got good leaders. An unknown author once said, you don't need a title to be a leader. The Lady Jackets have just enough leadership for the rest of the team to catch on. I'm Harley Young with Jacket Action News. So Taylor, what are you doing for Valentine's Day? Well, you know, I was actually thinking about taking you out tonight. Oh, well, of course. I even made you something. You made me? Oh, you made me cookies. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's all we have for the news today. Don't forget your sweetheart. Remember, the mission statement of Wynn High School believes that all students have potential. And Wynn High School strives to challenge all students to maximize their educational abilities. I'm Haven Bennett. And I'm Taylor Norsworthy with Jacket Action News.